Hey, everyone, and welcome to the May edition of our monthly leadership podcast, Leading His Leaders. I'm your host, Avery Nesbitt. Hey, I am joined today by a very good friend of mine. His name is Bill Komai, and he is the lead pastor at the Journey Church in Livonia, Michigan. And Bill, thanks for joining us on the podcast. Hey, thank you, man. Um, I, I appreciate the uh the opportunity to sit and chat and, and, uh, and love and respect so much what you do, man. I think leadership is a, a, a gift, as somebody said, that you know, very few people actually have a chance to, uh, to uh, exercise. And so for those of us that do have that opportunity to lead people, I think we, uh, we always do better when we can learn from one another. So, Absolutely. Absolutely. And we actually met in a, in a bit of a learning environment. We met here as a part of um, the New Thing organization, which is designed to bring churches together. And so, uh, man, I'm just really looking forward to this podcast. Thanks for joining us and being on. And here's what I wanted to dive into. I know you, I know your church. I know that you guys are big on not just building this big church, but but reaching the community, but being a part of the community, being actually within uh, where the people are. Uh, and I, we're in this season of grief, maybe even trauma, there's loss, there's change. Uh, this, this whole season of COVID-19 has really got everything turned upside down. And what I wanted to talk with you about is what are you doing to not only lead yourself through this, but to lead others through this? I mean, yes, you're the lead pastor at the church, but you're also a husband, you're also a dad, um, you're also a friend. And so what are you doing to self-lead yourself through all of this, maybe even your own grief, your own loss? And what are you doing to help others um, to help them get through it as well? Talk to us about that. Yeah, I, I mean, these are, are uh, strange times, you know, for sure, uh, from, a, from a leader, well, from any perspective, really. But yeah. from a leadership perspective, um, you know, I would venture to say that most people's leadership responsibilities got a little more complicated uh, a couple months ago. And, you know, so, um, man, for me, you know, I, I think that um, uh, in terms of leading myself, like one of the things that I've been trying to do is uh, somebody, somebody a couple of weeks ago, uh, right when this all first got started, I was on a call and somebody likened it to or used the analogy of, you know, the safety briefing on the airplane when um, the one where we're all putting in our earbuds and we've right. heard it a hundred right. times, a thousand times or a million times, so we don't listen anymore. Right. You know, but they're telling us what to do in the event of an emergency. And, um, and they, they use the analogy of, you know, the oxygen mask, because anybody who's heard that spiel knows the most important thing you can do in a loss of cabin pressure <laughs> is put your own mask on before you start trying to put, you know, other people's right. mask. And, um, and of course, the heart behind that, that, you know, we all know and understand is you're useless to anybody else if you're not taken care of. So, right. Um, so leading yourself is kind of one of those, to me, I think it's one of the most important questions right now. And, and I've just been trying to operate in that, uh, mindset for, you know, for us here in Michigan, um, as, as a church, it'll be nine weeks. I think we're at nine weeks now where we, since we've met in person, um, and you know, that, um, so, so it's, it's been a, a really crazy stretch of time, but basically daily being able to kind of challenge myself and ask myself, I mean, how am I able to put that oxygen mask on today? And, you know, I, I think that um, as a pastor, you know, which is so a lot of my time in leadership, as I know you can relate to, is spent in, you know, a lot of spiritual leadership. And um, this season has, has kind of, or leading yourself, you know, it, it's, it's, it's one thing to just to, to just lead yourself spiritually. But I've been trying to focus on like, not just leading myself spiritually, how am I leading myself physically? How am I leading myself emotionally? Um, you know, and looking for ways to what I would call not to overuse the analogy, but you know, how am I putting that, that oxygen mask on myself today? Like, yeah. And that's another thing I, I, I think leading myself has been shifting my view of time. Everybody's view of time got very different. Um, days seem really long now, especially if you're stuck at home. If you got kids at home, most people, uh, certainly us here in Michigan, the school year got cut off. Um, you know, so we're we're doing um, we're doing teaching at home. You know, with the kids, we're doing homeschooling. Yeah. You know, we're uh, my wife is an occupational therapist. She's still working, so um, so on a daily basis, her and I are you know juggling 
what that looks like to make sure that the kids are showing up for the calls that they're supposed to be on, <laughs> that we're yeah. making it to the calls we're supposed to be on. Yep. You know, our deadlines and their deadlines are being met. So, um, so just that, man, I mean, I, I think uh, from a personal standpoint, I am at my best in terms of leading other people when I am at my healthiest, which is true in any season. But right now with these heavier sort of mental and emotional and, you know, the, just the unknowns of all of this weighing on um, certainly the people we're leading, but ourselves is, you know, daily. So, so if, you know, for me, it looks like finding routine. It's what does it look like in the morning to make sure that, you know, well, I might be able to sleep in, I'm up and I'm spending that time with God. Um, you know, I'm spending time in prayer, I'm spending time in scripture, I'm spending time, you know, uh, not as a pastor, I'm not prepping for a message. I am as a follower of Jesus trying to spend time with my heavenly father. Um, because I'm better, I'm better at all that other stuff when that's there. You know, the gyms in Michigan have been closed down for going on nine, 10 weeks here. So what does it look like physically? You know, I've had to adapt my workouts and I'm working out in my garage, which, you know, I've never been able to do, uh, you know, um, having fun. I, I think right now, so much of, of life, everybody feels like the joy has sort of been sucked out of life in many ways. And uh, for a lot of people that, you know, that's, that's a daily reality. Um, and there are days where it feels that way for me, you know, where I'm just, I'm over it, you know, I'm, I'm fed up. I, I want to, I just, I'm tired of being told what to do. I'm tired of being told I have to stay home. I'm tired of worrying about whether or not I'm going to get sick. I'm tired of, you know, I just want to enjoy life. And of course, you know, I think somebody one time said like, our joy is our job, right? So I've got to do that. And, um, you know, for me, that looks like whether it be, you know, going on a bike ride or, um, or embracing the time that I have with my family, um, you know, right now, because that's one I think that is, if we're not careful, we'll bypass us. We may never get this kind of time with our family again, right. you know, where, um, if is so, you know, man, I, I could just keep going on and on about what that looks like. But um, but the general idea for me for leading myself has just been that kind of that picture of if I'm not making sure that that the oxygen, you know, the proverbial oxygen of, of life is flowing through, you yeah. know, my mental space, my spiritual space, my physical space, like I'm no good to anybody else. So I've got yeah. to make sure that things are in check for me. That's good. Now, one of the things, and that's a really good illustration, the whole like put on your mask. And, and me and my wife joke about it a lot that um, if something goes down, listen, I'm putting my kid's mask on. I'm telling the stewardess to get away from me. If I die, I die. But, my, but they're going to have their, their mask on. But I, in this season, I, I feel it. I feel the, my patience is shorter. My temper is much more at the surface. I'm, I'm just not my best if I'm not taking care of myself. Um, yeah. It's that's such a, such a, that resonates, that hits, that hits hard. And something else you said, I'd love for you to kind of unpack that a little bit more because we hear it, but it's really hard to do as pastors, leaders, as whatever you are. Um, it's so easy to get into the mode of prepping to give out. I read yeah. the Bible so I can get a message. I read this leadership book. I read this leadership podcast. Uh, I go to this podcast so I can, you know, use this stuff at work. How do you flip the switch of self-care of saying, I'm doing this for me? How is that hard? Was it hard to start? Was it hard to maintain? How, how did you flip that switch? Um, it, it's, it's hard to start. You know, I, I, that switch has been flipped for me for, for a couple of years now. Um, okay. So, so some of that is kind of looking back, but, you know, acknowledging, yeah, that's a hard switch to flip because I think that our culture, I think our church leadership culture, um, even though we know better, I still think, I still think that in a lot of ways it, it, it almost makes us feel selfish when, um, you know, we are setting aside time for ourselves. I think that's true culturally, but I think it, it permeates mm -hmm. church leadership culture also. So yeah. it's really hard to not feel selfish when, you know, um, when I'm carving out time for my own workouts, when I'm carving, you know, when, I, because the essence of time is everybody has the same amount, right? So it's it, in order to say yes to something, I have to say no to something yeah, else, something else. Yeah. Right. So when, so when part of my job description is to spiritually prepare to, you know, to teach something yeah. or to, to lead a meeting or to cast a vision or to do whatever, yeah. you know, it, it's, 
when, when part of my responsibilities as a follower of Christ or, or the disciplines that should be present in my life as a follower of Christ, when those blur into, and I, I don't, mm. you know, there's maybe a few other occupations that are similar to that offhand. I'm not, I'm not hundred percent sure of any where those lines blur like that, where what I do for a living, like what my calling and my responsibility is, is yeah. also uniquely something I'm supposed to do, you know, for myself. In everyday so, life. Right. <laughs> and, and so, um, so it's a hard switch to flip, but I think that, um, that once it's done, you know, it, I think the worst thing we can do with it, Avery, is we can turn it into this legalistic thing to where, like, mm. man, when, when God pours out revelation, he pours out revelation. When he speaks, when the Holy Spirit starts, you know, speaking something through a text or whatever, it's not like sitting there going, I'm not going to, I'm not going to share this with anybody because this is mine. You know, right. um, I think that there's times where that can be a good discipline where, where, you know, um, where you, maybe one of the best exercises you can do as somebody who communicates often is not share something, you know, right. keep it sacred, keep it private yeah. or, or resist the urge to share it right away, you know, and then vice versa. It's, it's not to be sitting there in a time of message prep, let's say, and, you know, and think, man, that that's really great for a sermon, but you know, uh, that's not for me. That's, that's for the church. Like, you know, that gets really wonky. So, right. um, so I think it's, it's, I think it's a hard switch to flip it's a healthy switch to flip. But mm. then once you flip it, you also have to make sure that you don't get very legalistic about it and to say, man, you know, but, but intentionality I think is the key. So, you know, um, so carving out that time to where um, I'm not going on a fishing expedition, looking for something to teach anyone in the morning. Mm. All I'm doing is sitting down with my coffee. Um, Cause I love coffee <laughs> with my, Bible, you know, in, in routine, like I'm, I'm a routine person. So, you know, I do it the same way in the morning, uh, every morning. And, um, I'm just sitting down and just opening up scripture. And there are days where I get to the end of that. And like, you know, it felt like something I was supposed to do, but right. I didn't necessarily walk away from it with this just mind blowing experience of something. Right. God should and then there are days where it's like, oh, my God, I've never noticed that before. I've never seen that before, you know. And so so most mornings journaling is a part of that for me. Yeah. Um, but, man, I think it's I think it's it's just the posture of the heart coming into it. Like my posture is not one of trying to mine out truth to share. Mm -hmm. I'm just sitting there with yeah. that childlike faith again in the morning while heavily yeah. caffeinated, asking <laughs> God to show me something new about him. Right. Yeah. Because that's the other side as pastors, you know, I mean, you preach enough, you, you lead enough, you, you walk through enough years of experience in ministry and um, it's, you know, it can get dangerous, man, where you start to think, you know, everything about God, like, you know, right. you're not surprised anymore. And so, right. um, so it's that it's sitting down with scripture, it's sitting down in prayer and just trying to bring back that, that childlike expectancy that says, God, show me something about you that I did not know before. Oh, that's you know? good. Sometimes it ends up in a yeah. message. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it doesn't. No, and I think that's true for pastors and believers alike. Something you said, that's going to stick with me. It's the, um, I'm not here to prep something. And what I, what I hear is, know why you're here. Why are you yeah. here? Yeah. Are you here so that you can be the person that knows a new thing? Or are you here because you want to spend time with me? Well, whether you're a pastor or just a believer, um, you can come to church with that mentality and just say, I already know this. I'm just here to check the box. Or are you yeah. really here to spend time with them? That's really good. That's really good. It's a, it's a difficult flip. It's a difficult switch to flip, but it's, it's a healthy switch to flip. I really like that. Hey, before we go, how are, I see, I really get how you're leading yourself and, and how you're leading those around you through a healthy version of you. What are some of the things that you guys are doing at the journey church to, um, show others how they can help. Yeah. Well, um, I think the irony in that question is it actually, it, it kind of reverses back into, um, you know, the first question, uh, yep. one of the ways people can help, you know, because, um, and I don't know exactly what the climate was, you know, or, or is in, in Georgia, um, you know, in Michigan, everything's been locked down for a while. So mm -hmm. getting people to help one another, um, is very limited because people can't be around each other. Right. right. So, um, so, so part of it though is, and, and I think, um, 
so much of leadership is an action bias. It's, it's a, it's a forward moving kind of idea. It's a yeah. take new, like, you know, for me, I mean, I love the idea of taking new territory and, you know, in, in, in vision out front and moving forward. And so much of leading people and equipping people is kind of for that missional movement um, yeah. in a lot of ways. Um, so when everything seems to stop, we shifted our focus and our attention a couple weeks ago away from like, we're not casting vision for the future right now because nobody cares about next month because right now today seems like it's taking forever. Right. Like, you know, um, March, April and May have all had about 150 days in them as far as our, our <laughs> this is show, true. You know? This is true. So, so it's to, it's to shift and resist that urge from, you know, this responsibility of leadership to be one that's kind of forward facing out ahead, you know, now to, um, the best way we can get people to help, uh, first is to help them stay healthy mentally, emotionally, and physically. So how can we help people? How can we help equip people to lead themselves right now in those environments that they're in daily? Well, Bill, thank you for sharing with us. Thank you for stopping by the podcast. This has been really cool, man. This has been really cool. Hey, thank you, man. I appreciate it. Uh, you're sitting outside right now. I'm inside because it's rainy and cold, but you look like you're <laughs> living well, the you life. Well, you know, up there in Michigan, I, I consider you'd be used to the rainy and cold. Man, you'd think. <laughs> well, thanks for stopping by the podcast. Hey, everyone who is watching and listening, hopefully um, something we've said today helps you as you're leading his leaders. Thanks, everyone.